Hey there guys, how you going? Welcome back to Hearns TV and me again, Dan. I'm gonna take you through an unboxing video of a huge, <laughs> huge box here. Uh, the uh, Northrop F89 Scorpion. Now, the F89 Scorpion is a largely forgotten uh, jet fighter from many years ago, actually. This, uh, this was the first uh, twin engine jet, uh, jet interceptor in uh, US Air Force history, actually. Yeah, it's one was one of the, the aircraft that bridged the gap from propeller fighters into, into, jet, uh, into jet aircraft. Yeah, so I'll tell you all about the F-89 Scorpion as we go along and uh, yeah, and uh, I'll, we'll get to started on the uh, unboxing it so you can see what's on the inside. But first, let's have a look at the artwork and look at this thing. Look at this. This is beautiful box art at the front here. You get to see the um, what the jet is like. This is a four, made from Ravel, uh, 148 scale, and you have... Um, some of the paints, the glue and a brush included, which is very, very nice. Very nice of them to do that. Huge box though. Um, this is a Tupolev Bull, uh, an early uh, nuclear bomber from the uh, Soviet Union. It was just a, a carbon copy of the uh, American B-29 Super Fortress. Yeah, the um, Scorpion was first, uh, was designed not long after the Second World War. Its first flight was in 1948 and it entered service in 1950 and uh, its technology was fairly rapidly surpassed actually so it didn't serve for too long it was put into the air national guard uh, reserve uh, service and it was finally phased out in 1969 there were several different variants of the f-89 and uh, just well, 1050 of them were made and this looks like uh, this is an earlier one here. I can tell from the guns in the front. So let's have a look inside, inside the box. Move that off to the side. That goes over there. And we'll start with the instructions. Yeah. All right. So in color, very nice. Look at that. I love colored instructions. And yeah, the 50th anniversary of the Northrop F89 color on the inside as well with guidelines for the, your paints and everything. But uh, some of the paint is included, but not all of it. These are your sprues. Jeez, there's not very many. And then colored guide here for your pieces, putting it together. So you've got glue, paint, how long it'll take to, for it to dry, and decals. You have to, oh, safety instructions. Do not drink eat or smoke while working with products containing solvents. I thought that would have been a little common sense, but it's always nice that they have our safety, uh, uh, safety concerns for their customers. And as you can see, the parts here all coming together. Yeah, just there. And here we have the, the look at that. There's a, the Scorpion there. Ah, as you can see, ANG or Air National Guard. Uh, Mont, which I'm guessing might mean Montana, where it would have been stationed. Yes, I love the, like the the decal markings there. Yeah, let's have a look now at um, pardon me. What's inside the box? Let's have a look at the sprues. Have a look at the pieces. Now we have. You see, this is a 48 scale. The box is deceptively large. Like that, that's an enormous box. But when you look at it, it's a standard 48 scale, so it's still a decent size, but it really didn't need a box quite that big. And here we have the fuselage of the uh, of the F-89 Scorpion. Uh, like I said, there were several different variants. This is an early one. I can tell by the guns at the front because they were actually removed later on, uh, and it was just, they uh, the nose was was reserved for a more powerful radar uh, guidance systems and to make place for additional fuel. As you can see, it was a very basic design, the F-89, with the engines and nacelles just on the underside, off to the side there, and here the wing roots and the tail up there. 
the tail of the scorpion was up really high, which is why it was given the name the scorpion, actually. And it was out of the to um, keep it clear from the uh, the jet blast here at the rear of the engines. I like the details here. They're raised and some indented as well. Yes, very nice. You can see all of the panels, the wing roots, and then oh, there you get to see where the head-up display would be at the at the front of the cockpit and a two-person crew. And the upper parts of the wing, look at that. So raised, mostly raised, but some indented details as well. Very, very nice. Big, thick wings. Provided a lot of lift uh, to uh, keep it up high. Because don't forget, this was an interceptor. Okay, not so much a dogfighter. The Scorpion didn't really have a very good maneuverability. It was sort of a point, uh, point defense. It would take off, intercept uh, Soviet nuclear bombers, shoot them down, turn around and come back. So it was for, <coughs> pardon me, altitude, speed, stability, and uh, weapons delivery. Not so much agility and outperforming other fighters of its day. Yeah, not too versatile either. It did have a modicum of uh, ground attack capability built into it. So. I think it was 2,000 pounds worth of bombs it could carry, but uh, it never actually fired a shot in anger, and uh, I don't think it ever did any of uh, its um, uh, ground attack capability was uh, put into practice. That was the first sprue. And second sprue. Yeah, here's the other side. The other side of the fuselage. Raised and indented panels. Again, there's the top part of the tail. As you see, that was very high. Would have been very high up. And the underside of the wings. There. More raised and indented details there. Beautiful. Very nice. I like this kit a lot. And here we have the railings for the uh, underwing, underwing rockets. And while on the subject of the rockets, another first that uh, the F-89 Scorpion is uh, known for was it was the first jet to carry air-to-air -air nuclear weapons. Yeah, it carried a rocket, the Air-2 Genie, that had a two kiloton nuclear warhead in it. And uh, they would fire that into well, the formations of bombers at a great distance. The explosion would have been immense. The flash would have blinded... Uh, any pilots outside of the blast radius. And then there's the shock wave. And of course the EMP, the electromagnetic pulse, would have uh, knocked any other bombers in the area right out of the sky. So yeah, immensely powerful air-to-air -air weapon, but short-lived and it was uh, retired from service after not too long. Another thing about the Scorpion, it's first, it took part in what was called Ground Zero Population 5, which in 1957, uh, Scorpion launched an Air 2 Genie rocket and they detonated it 18,000 uh, feet above five US Air Force officers. They actually volunteered for this. This is the amazing thing. They volunteered for this. They stood on the ground and then they had them detonate a nuclear rocket just above their heads to show you know how much faith they had in uh, nuclear weapons and their safety and all of that now all those guys survived the blast remember this is 1957 and all those officers lived well into the 1990s but all of them ended up getting diagnosed with some form of cancer in their lifetime but i'm sure that was just a coincidence but, yeah anyway here we have the where the, uh, the landing gear would be. Look at the size of that, that huge landing gear on the Scorpion and uh, control surfaces at the back of the trailing edge of the wing. Yes, beautiful, beautiful details. Yeah, so that's the first two sprues. Like, um, like I said, there wasn't uh, too many, not too many here, not a lot of parts. Was, yeah, it's for unnecessarily huge box. And uh, here we go more of the there's the underside the under part of the fuselage right there the more for where the engines would be the tail and here this is around the cockpit this is where the canopy would have been the two two crew members the air intakes 
to let the uh, the engines aspirate and the turbine blades for each engine that would just go on the inside. And the two crew members, just there. Yeah. Instrumentation inside of the cockpit and then there's the, the nose, the end of the radome. And some of the air to air rockets just then. Oh, sorry, just there, should I say. And these are at the very tips of the wings were fuel pods. Uh, later versions of the F-89 Scorpion, I think it was the H model, uh, the, or it's either the D or the H model, the uh, pods at the end of the wings ended up carrying a whole bunch of folding fin rockets uh, on the inside. And they could also have AIM-4 Falcon missiles strapped to the uh, three of them on the outside of each of those pods. A very, very early, uh, a very, very early air-to-air -air missile in US Air Force service. And here we go. This is the, we've got, ah, there we go. This is for the landing gear. Look at those, look at the wheels. Huge wheels for the landing gear. And there's the, the doors there that would cover them over underneath the wings. More for the air intakes. More instrumentation. That looks like it's from the uh, co-pilot in the rear. And the turkey feathers with the end exhaust for the engines, for the landing gear, landing gear. Yeah, oh, and then the front, and then the front part of the uh, of the wheels just there. Not a lot of parts to this. I think there's only 75 parts. I didn't realize that there was um, not that many. I didn't realize I was going to blitz through this kit as quickly as I as I was going to, and because once again the deceptively large box and then there's the canopy just there I don't like taking the canopy out of the out of the plastic because they can be quite fragile so I like to keep them in place there and then let's have a look at the decals here we have there we are obviously US Air Force and once again AMG Air National Guard and Air National Guard there as well the Air Force Reserve I love that yellow, I love that yellow, very, very nice. Yeah, the American Air Force was the only Air Force that operated the F-89 Scorpion. And, and then lastly, like I was saying on the front of the box here, they've also included a little bit of glue and some paint and one brush. You're definitely going to need more paint and uh, more brushes to um, br really bring out the details in this one. Yeah, wow. This is, the, this is probably the quickest one I, th I think I've ever done, actually. There's, yeah, really not a lot to that kit, like 75 parts at the most. This would be good for someone who's an early on modeler. Uh, yeah. And, wow, I can still can't get over how, how big the box is. But yeah, just before I go, the F-89 Scorpion. Uh, one of the reasons why it's been largely forgotten is because, I've got to be honest, it wasn't very good. Uh, it, um, when it was selected, there were two other jets in the competing against it. And all of the test pilots, when they flew all three of them, they came back and they said that they didn't like any of them. And the Scorpion was selected because out of all three, it was the fastest. And intercepting bombers before they drop nuclear weapons on you is a game of speed. So that is why it was selected. The ground crews hated them because that they were difficult to maintain. And not only that, but there were so many different variants because there was a lot of problems with them and they were constantly trying to iron them out and improve them. It had a very high accident rating. In fact, it had six major accidents in less than 12 months. One of them, the entire tail section actually broke off in mid-flight and they were grounded for an entire year while they were while they were fixing out uh, all of the um all of the problems with it but yeah that's uh, unfortunate but it's it's because the scorpion came about when jet aircraft was in its absolute infancy this is just after the second world war uh, airborne radars were new, jets were new, air-to-air -air rockets and missiles were all new. This is an entire jump from 
piston engine propeller fighters into the jet age, there was always going to be teething problems with such a radical jump in technology. There always is. And uh, the Scorpion was one of the first ones to be on that front line. So yeah, it, it faced all of the issues absolutely head on. So its legacy is not quite as flashy as a lot of other jets, but it is definitely an important one. It was an important uh, developmental stage in, uh, in jet fighters, but yeah. All right, so that's that. Um, Ravel, yeah, very cool. I like that kit. Uh, we've got a couple of them in stock, so if you want one, grab one. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in again, guys. I love making these videos. Uh, hope to see you in store sometime soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, rock and roll, baby. Thank you.